Zion has been healthy and on a tear of late. And Thursday, with just the latest effort, he finished with his 19th game of the season of 25 points on 60% from the floor. The only player with more in any other uh, season for the Pelicans is Zion himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zach. Zion's putting together some of the best basketball of his young career, but what stood out to you watching his play of late? It's the best he's ever played. He's making a late season push for all NBA. His defense is on another planet from where it was even two, three months ago. But there were a couple plays that made me sit up in my chair and say, holy bleep, and we're going to look at uh -oh. him now. The first is this drive. Holy yeah, bleep. sorry, bleep it out. The first is this drive. This doesn't look like much because it's Zion. That's Giannis Antetokounmpo yep. and Brooke Lopez. The most fearsome rim protection duo in the entire league. A defensive player of the year and an annual defense player of the year. Kenny, he doesn't care. And I want to see more of this when Brandon Ingram is back. Inverted pick and roll. CJ McCollum screens for Zion. Uh oh, what are we going to do? We got to trap. We got to do something. Flares open for a three. That's point Zion, but it's point Zion interacting with the other great players on the team. Thumbs up. Holy bleep. Well, look, while the Pels are tre are trending up, it feels like the Bucks are treading water. Take a listen to a little bit of frustration from Giannis after last night's loss. Gotta play fast, like that's who that's who we are, you know. But we we just gotta find it. We don't have nine games to find it. We gotta find it tomorrow. We gotta find it against Atlanta. I don't, I don't care about the nine games we have left. I gotta find it right now. The Bucks have been up and down since Doc Rivers took over, and they are now 14 and 13. Let me repeat, they are 14 and 13 in his time on the sideline. Milwaukee has been in the middle of the pack during that time. And remember, Adrian Griffin was 30 and 13 during his time with the Bucks this season. We are now joined with Hall of Famer Mark Spears. Mark, you know better than anyone what that record says. That's who you are. Yeah. So. What do you think that we're seeing from the Bucs? What is it that you feel is the biggest issue with them? It's a wild ride like a Harley that you could get in Milwaukee right now. I mean, the thing with this team is they're still getting used to Doc, right? They're still getting used to Dame. They're still getting used to all these different things. But this is what's going to help them. One, they, they got to figure out a way to keep that two seed, and luckily the rest of the East will help them, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But once they lock that two seed in, they got five days. Mm -hmm. They got those five days in between their last yeah. game and the first playoff game. And that's when Doc Rivers has to do a mini camp. Have these guys come in for those five days, get, um, get used to Chris Middleton again, figure out all the problems, not only get on the court, get in the film room. They got five days to figure it out. Doc could be basically get his plan together to try to fix things because, I mean, this has certainly been disappointing. Sure. But it's not like Doc got a training camp. So this will be Doc's training camp to try to try to figure this out. That's a great point. And, and one of the reasons why they had initially hired Adrian Griffin, first time head coach, they thought, oh, we have most of the same guys back. Right? This yeah. is before the Dane Lillard trade. This is, be, this is a veteran team that they had Pat had. It, it, this is before they had all this uncertainty. And then all of a sudden, right before training camp, they trade for Damian Lillard, and they trade out Drew Holiday, and they trade, and they make such huge seismic changes. So you're right. Doc Rivers hasn't had a training camp. He doesn't have his whole staff there. He hasn't even been able to put in most of what he does offensively or defensively. And his team hasn't had a chance to run it all. I mean, you don't get to practice much during the season. No. I, look, for me, when I watch this team, I'm still trying to figure out where what they are trying to figure out that's the keyest thing it's like yeah. oh you can see that a team is trying to figure something out but when you watch them they're like what are they trying to figure out there was their defense there was their their pick and roll with Giannis and Dame we've seen a little bit more mm -hmm. but Perk what do you think can get this team rolling why do you think they aren't Perk rolling? knows Doc he knows what Doc can mm -hmm. do or not do well I, I, it's about sacrificing and it's going to start with Giannis Antetokounmpo like how much is he going to sacrifice not having the ball in his hands? When you look at the Milwaukee Bucks without Giannis, Damian Lillard game goes to another level. And I'm not just talking about scoring. I'm talking about uh, facilitating. So, Giannis, are you actually going to embrace that role of actually, you know, being more of a screen set or a dribble handoff guy? You're still going to get your points, but can you do it by sacrificing uh, being less ball dominant? I think... 
when you look at these numbers right here, when, you know, Giannis is off the court compared to when he's on the court, now I get it. Dame Rose steps up, to, is, is, is asked to do more. But again, you brought Damian Lillard in here to give you help. So if, if I'm Giannis, I'm actually watching Jokic and Murray and how they mastered the two-man game and saying, can I do this with Damian Lillard? And I believe the answer is yes. Oh, don't stab me. Whoever wins tonight in Denver takes the one seed in the West. People love throwing up all of these numbers that don't matter. But I'm here to tell you that tonight's game could shape up a lot of what's going on in the West. Now look. Whoever with the win, the Timberwolves or Nuggets, these are the chances of them finishing with the number one seed. With the loss, it drops to 18% and 23%. So that shows you that both these teams, they know these numbers. They know how important with that. And even with that, both teams will meet again before the season ends. And tonight's game could be even bigger for the Nuggets since they don't own the tiebreaker over the Wolves just yet. That is what's impressive. And another little tidbit, the Denver Nuggets, they don't own the tiebreaker over OKC. So they've got they've got a little work looking up. They might be tied, but they're in the worst position of being tied. So per between these two teams, who do you think is going to be in the conference final? Do you think that this is a conference finals preview? I don't, I don't, but I, I, you know, I'm not sold yet because I don't know when Carl Anthony Towns or if he's coming back, but I will say this, I'm, I would not, the Denver Nuggets are going to be there, okay, but when it comes down to the Minnesota Timberwolves, I really don't want to go against Anthony Edwards and how stingy that defense is, right? That's a bunch of dogs over there. I watched them last weekend when they played against the Golden State Warriors and what they do on the perimeter, how they make people feel, how they make people uncomfortable. This team is very, very dangerous. I think when you think about this game tonight, this is a confidence booster for the Minnesota Timberwolves. We know what they're capable of doing at home, but when you have a young team that could actually go into Denver against the defending champs who just came off a loss against the Phoenix Suns, and win the game going into the postseason, it does a, uh, it does a certain thing when it comes down to your confidence on the le for, for as a level uh, aspect. When they've played in the past, what Minnesota likes to do against Jokic is put Towns on Jokic mm -hmm. and put Gobert on Aaron Gordon and say, Rudy, you roam around and block shots and muck everything up. Well, there's no Towns tonight, as Perk mentioned. So who guards Jokic? Do they try and do that with Nas Reed? That seems like it could be a problem. Do they put Gobert on Jokic? I think that's interesting. And about Carl Towns, it's a little early. I don't want to make too much of it, but they're seven and three without him. Nas Reed is playing really well in his starting spot. Their defense has not missed a beat, given the financial situation this team is in after this season when all the big deals come together given that they can't really decide who wants to own the team in any given week or month or year. <laughs> I just think it's worth noting how they're playing without him. And if that continues, and I don't think it will, I think they need Carl Towns to make a deep playoff run. I think his shooting and skill set on offense is just so special and so valuable to them. But it's worth monitoring given the situation they face going forward. But as for tonight, who guards Jokic? It all starts from there every time the Nuggets play. I also think there seems like there's a lot of people who want to own the team right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, look, people forget that they actually had a playoff series against each other last year. And it was the first round. And I think we look back on that playoff series and, and you know, Denver got through them. They hadn't won a championship yet. But now when you look back on that series, like they matched up very well with the Denver Nuggets. They have the size. They have the versatility. They have different parts, as Zach mentioned. They have different ways of guarding Jokic. Like, this is a team, if you're Denver, that, I mean, they were constructed by the same guy, Tim Connolly. Tim Connolly was in Denver for a long time. Now he's in Minnesota. Calvin Booth took over in Denver. But they were constructed with the same idea in mind, which is size, versatility, an Aaron Gordon type. So the, the Jaden McDaniels there in, in, in Minnesota. They, this is a tough matchup if this indeed is a playoff matchup going forward. Are we just going to ignore the new kids on the block? Uh, yes. Or are we just going to ignore them? Giving them some props. Yeah. Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh, oh, those uh, new kids. Though. Those new kids. Yeah. Those young boys. They're half a game out. That's like, right. Like, they got a shot at this too, right? Oh. Or, 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 or are we just going to dismiss them because they're young? They have no pressure. They just balling. SGA, 
perhaps should be MVP. Chet is, I mean, every time I watch them, my heart starts telling me, you know what? You, you, I know my mind says no because they're young, but my heart's like, I don't know. These young boys, they're coming to play every night. So I don't know, man. I'm not going to just dismiss them because they're the, you know, got Similac on their breath and everything. Look, I, I, I agree. And the three of them, now Denver's yep. been the one that has kind of creeped up here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but it's been OKC. It's been it, it's been Minnesota. Those have been the two teams really for most of the regular season that have been battling for number one and then Denver just being the old man slowly getting to where they need to get. But I will say this. Everyone talks about how they are vulnerable at the top, the one and two, when they're talking about OKC and Minnesota. No one's talking about if Denver gets the one seed right. that that seven and eight could possibly well, knock them they're, off. They're playing like defending champs. Like yes. they, after the All-Star break, Jokic sent a text around to everybody and said, it's time to go. Yeah. And they have gone. They've, That's they've, what he said. It, it, it's, it's time, time, to, to, it's time to play. Okay. And, and I think that they I'm have played that. like a defending champion these, these last couple weeks, especially since the All-Star break. And we just had a topic about the Celtics, right? They yeah. have not played like that. Yeah. They're not playing with something to prove right now. They're playing like we just want to get to the end of the regular season and let's be healthy going into the playoffs. Denver I, I, is playing like, let me remind you.